I have so much to do. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank and I am in severe con crunch mode. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the term, it means I am crunching to get a bunch of projects done before an upcoming Comic Con because for the life of me, we all just procrastinate. Now, I literally just sat down here about two hours ago to sit and do a 3D printing to settings tutorial and talk about different ways to orient prints and I have all these examples here and I just could not focus on it. My brain is just going in a million different directions. I have to do repairs on the Mark 85 and get a backpack done and I'm building a new helmet for that and I'm doing stuff on the Mark 39 to update it but I need to get a Red Hood cosplay done too but I'm also working on a really cool Demon Slayer Katana video that's due really soon but they took forever to ship me the part. Like it's just chaos. I'm gonna be going to four different cons between now and April. The first one's KatsuCon in Maryland in the middle of February, so like 20 days. Then after that, we have Emerald City Comic Con at the beginning of March over in Seattle, Washington. And then the big one, WonderCon in Anaheim, California at the end of March. And then directly after WonderCon, I'm going to C2E2 in Chicago at the beginning of April. I'm screwed. Now, I really love doing these types of videos, but when I used to do them, you know, two plus years ago on the channel, people didn't seem that interested in them. But I would love to be able to just grab my camera sometimes and not really have a theme, just kind of vlog and talk about all of the different projects I have across the table. For example, I'm in the middle of building this really awesome Red Hood helmet. Now I already have a Red Hood helmet tutorial. Clearly my paint job has gotten a lot better, but I was just sitting here today and hand painting these black lines in and you know, I could talk about that. If you saw my Instagram story, you know that I just added lights to the backpack of the Mark 39. Now I just did a Mark 39 update video and this doesn't work you know, episode 12, but I could talk about the electronics and how easy it was to do this. I'd really, really love to know if you guys like this type of video or do you really just only want the long format structured video, here's a tutorial on how to do A to B to C all the way to Z, or can I just get a little, I don't know, chaotic sometimes and just vlog? Regardless of if you want me to in this video, that's what I'm gonna do in this video, so please let me know if I could, if I could start trying to unwind a little bit more on the channel and bringing these types of videos back where I can just, you know, give you some information on different things I have going on, but it just doesn't need to be all about the same thing. So with that, I'm just going to take the camera off the tripod and we'll go around the room and I'll talk about some of the cool projects I have going on. Like guys, I'm not kidding. This room is an absolute pigsty. There's parts everywhere. And like, look at my desk. Look at this. I am a very organized person. This gives me such crazy anxiety. I hate it and I really want to clean it up. Um, I'm going to clean this up. Okay, that is, um, that's much better. I actually went and organized the whole room just to make this, uh, well, simpler. So I've been really working on my finishing and polishing skills lately. Now that I have that paint booth that I can't show you right now because it's dark out and there's no power in the garage because it's getting renovated. Oh yeah, um, my entire garage is getting renovated. If you saw on Instagram, I was able to finally finish the second floor, the attic area of the garage. And now I have this really awesome uh, multi-chambered paint booth with a, a vent extraction system. This way I can start getting into HVLP gun spraying, like the really nice quality spray paint. But even using, still using spray paint and rattle hands. It's such a better clean environment, dust free. I have much better control over the paint and the, um, the way I'm spraying. It's amazing. And this is like the results I've been getting just from rattle cans. Like again, I've done red hood helmets before, but being able to now have such a uh, control over the airflow and keep dust and particles out, I'm getting such nicer quality paint. I, I love it. You guys actually got to see a little bit of it in the Power Ranger um, helmet video, but there'll be more on that when the entire garage is finished. The entire bottom of the garage where um, my resin printers were and the old printers were, it's all getting finished. Um, insulation, drywall, they're redoing all the electrical and I'll actually be able to have like a nice workshop. Then I'll be able to be out there year round because they're installing a, um, an AC and a heating system 
system too, so my prints aren't, won't be at risk of melting in the summer and I won't be freezing in the winter. Another fun thing I've gotten back into doing is uh, buffing and polishing my 3D prints, the, well the paints at least. Um, just like you would buff, polish, and wax a car, and I'm working on a video tutorial of this. It'll probably be when I'm done with like a clear coating tutorial. It'll be after that, but it, I'm gonna show you guys how to wet sand, how to actually wet sand your prints. And again, I talked about it a long time ago, but you're basically wet sanding the clear coat and making it nice and smooth, and then you can reapply apply clear coat on top of that, and then you can take like car product, you know, uh, rubbing compound, polishing compound, car wax, and guys, like if you could feel this, it's like a bowling ball. There's, there's, there's no grit, nothing, no orange peel. This thing is, this is the smoothest helmet I have ever made. Um, don't ask why there's no lip. Long story, um, but th this came out beautiful, and I want to start doing this more on prints. I cannot wait to do it on this Red Hood helmet, and that'll be another video. Maybe, um, maybe I'll, maybe I can just film that video. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But while I was at the store getting the paints to do these details, um, it's just some simple, really simple black paint. Um, I think it was semi gloss or satin black, and then just a really nice little paintbrush. And I just took my time, and it was very therapeutic, and just kind of went through. That was fun. Um, I could have taped it off with some nice modeler's tape. I just it, it's recessed enough and I trusted my hand um, painting skills enough to get that done. But while I was there, I found this really cool stuff called Molotov um, Liquid Chrome. And it is a chrome paint pen. And when I saw this, I immediately thought of my janky chrome paint job on this Black Panther helmet. So I really want to try to see how this will look. Um, I'm going to go and do maybe this detail and let's let's test it out. All right, I, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it is so much nicer. All right, so I just went and did the entire helmet, and this stuff is amazing. I, I feel so stupid for never using it before. It literally just gave it a near-perfect chrome mirror effect. Um, I got to experiment with it more, like up here near the eyebrow. Like, that came out great. Um, yeah, definitely been sleeping on this stuff. Uh... Sick. Let's let's keep going. Have you guys ever seen metal 3D prints? Now let's call this like early access. Um, I probably should wait till the video to show you guys, but these are like they're so cool. It, it's a solid metal aluminum 3D print. Now this isn't a 3D printer I could get my hands on. This is like an industrial. Let me put this right here. Oh, don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. Um, this is an industrial like grade machine uh, from Proto Labs. I got four different parts metal 3D printed for a sponsorship. Um, they're sponsoring the build video and, and some of you probably already recognize this thing, um, but it's it's so cool. Now, yeah, a resin 3D printer could probably print at a better quality than this, but that's not the point. It's, it's solid. This is, I'm so, I, I'm like geeking out about this. Um, I can't wait to make this thing. The video that this is gonna be incorporated in is gonna be super cool because I'm using three really specific different kind of processes to build this um, this katana. I'm using the new Bamboo P1P. Um, I finally got it working and there's a video coming out about that printer. It is so fast. Um, I was able to print two halves of the katana handle and I think each one of these took like an hour and a half. I was able to print this little piece in like eight minutes. It is an incredible printer but it's a little small and it could be a little bit better. So I'll have notes about that. Uh, I'm excited to show you guys that printer though. So we're using a really new, um, a new high quality printer, the P1P. We're also, I finally got my CR30 working. My belt printer, it works. I have nothing in here that I could show you because it's all in the garage being painted, but I was able to print the katana blade in one piece and then the sheath in one piece. Um, and that's where some of these caps go on. They go on the, the sheath and the katana. And, um, and then metal 3D printing. So we have like the new kit on the block, the P1P, a CR30 belt printer that's being misused for its purposes. It, it, belt printing was made for repetition. It was made, oh, I need to print a hundred of these in a row, keep it going. Belt printing wasn't invented for one long thing, but that's what we use it as, um, and it's awesome. And then metal 3D printing, because this is just cool. So it's gonna be a really cool video. Stay tuned for that one. I'm so excited to get this done. Like. Ugh. Ow. Actually, before we move on, um, I can show you a print from the P1P. This arc reactor was printed in three hours on the Bamboo P1P, and 
the quality of it is gorgeous. Like I, I didn't really do much. I think I selected like a 0.16 millimeter layer height. And this is a resin arc reactor that was already chromed and sprayed. It's pretty close. Like, I don't know. I, I, I want to paint this one the same way. Um, and if they were both chrome and at a distance, I think they'd be pretty indistinguishable. So FDM printers are, they're getting up there and it's really cool to see. This Dr. Fate helmet is almost done too. A lot of you have been seeing this one on my Instagram. Um, I went back to using some Montana Gold products. This is Montana Gold Gold Chrome and it is very finicky to use. This is the standard Rust-Oleum gold that's on Starboost and the Mark 85 and most of my gold props. And there's a very clear difference in the gold sheen here. This Rust-Oleum gold can, can take a clear coat. It, this is a 1K clear coat. Um, and it, it's gold. I don't think anybody would argue that, but it isn't metallic. There's, there's a difference there. This is a glossy gold finish. This is a metallic finish. And I'll go over more in this video how I got uh, the finish for this. With the, I mean, a lot of you guys know, gloss, black base coat, the nicer that gloss black, the better. Um, and because I had that new uh, paint booth area, I was able to really control how nice this came out. But I know I can get this gold even better. The gold chrome is amazing. And then I'll move on to like spray guns. Another dilemma I'm always having is showing you guys um, the swords, the different props I'm making because it's kind of the same thing. And I just, I don't know about littering the channel with so many of the same processes. Like this is Asta's sword from uh, Black Clover. It's called the Demon Slayer, not Demon Slayer swords. But the process of printing this and welding it together and painting it and putting a metal rod in it is the same thing I did for the Buster Sword and the Dragon Slayer and the Jawblade. I never even made a video on Zengetsu because it's the same as all of those. Um, yeah, it'd be a cool clickbaity title because if there's, you know, uh, um, Black Clover fans, they get to see me make Asta Sword. But like, I just don't know, do I show you guys a video on this? And do I show you guys another Monster Hunter Sword build? And well, I'm probably still gonna do Aloy's sword uh, or spear, that's fun. And then there's Saba, you guys saw that. Hey, look at this. You guys know what this is? I'm a, I, I, I showed it on Instagram. Ah, eh. Let's just bring this here. Can we rebuild this? We have the technology, I think this goes here. What does that? Uh, here you go. Nope. Yep. Yep. Okay. That that's the sword I'm working on. That's just the blade. And then there's a cross guard and a really big cross guard thing. And then a hand. It's like seven feet. Um, that's getting its own video because I'm probably gonna reprint this blade. I printed this on my FL Sun. I'm probably just gonna reprint this blade on the the CR30, the belt printer, in one piece in one piece in one hey look my airbrush setup is still over here i haven't touched it i really need to do that hey let's talk about this mess over here uh, okay so so with these four cons coming up i need to fix both suits um the mark 85 is pretty okay right now but i need a new helmet and i talked about that somewhere online um the widow's peak uh, it, it's broke see 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 it cracked um because of the tension and the way i printed this helmet it's just broken over time. But as you guys also remember, this helmet is so tight on my head. Like it is actually uncomfortable. Yeah. How tight this thing is. And it gives me a headache after wearing it. And this helmet's just seen so much action already. It's time to retire it. It's broken. I need to print one bigger. Um, so I'm really quickly printing a new Mark 85. I'm using the Walsh 3D file. The lip's gonna open, it has inner details in it, and I'm filming a whole video on that too. It's gonna be an entire tutorial, start to finish. Like, I need a helmet. Let me go ahead and um, show you how to print it, print it, how to assemble it, how to paint it, how to do the elect, like it's gonna be a start to finish video on an Iron Man helmet. Um, probably for the first time on my channel, it won't be a series, but I'm in a rush on it. So uh, it probably won't be edited till after eh, Katsukan. Yeah, Katsukan. And I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do with this helmet. Um, I thought about doing like a giveaway, but it's broken. So I don't know about that. I don't know if anybody would want a broken helmet. Um, I could weld repair it and just repaint the top. But like I said, it, it's really tight. Um, I, I don't know. I Give me some ideas on what I could do with this helmet. That makes sense. Don't be like, oh, just give it to me. Like, no, st stop that. Like, what can I actually do to my Mark 85's helmet that would be, like, beneficial to me and or somebody else? Oh, and then there's this thing. 
Um, this is gonna be in the next Mark 85 update video. This is the new chest beam. It just fires like ka -cha! and no, it doesn't. It's, 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 it's the back plate. It's the, um, wait, where is it? It's this thing, the lightning refocuser from Endgame where Thor shoots the lightning. He's like, Thor hit me. Like it's this, I'm making it finally. And it, it's awesome. What I did on Discord the other day is figured out a way to attach it to the um, suit without having to like change anything on the suit. It should just be an attachment. I shouldn't have to redo anything on this. And I was able to figure out a really cool double Velcro system with a magnet at the bottom. And it's gonna work perfectly. Um, it, it's gonna, the suit's gonna be so chonky and I can't wait. That will be in the next Mark 85 update video, like when the whole thing is done. It's not gonna be done before KatsuCon, but I, I, I will have the lightning refocuser done before WonderCon in Anaheim. Um, that's March 23rd, I think, or something like that. So I'm very excited about this thing. Aside from that, the Mark 85 is just the Mark 85. Um, it's, it's, it's a little short right now because the shoes aren't on it, but ooh, hey bud, yeah. Is this what comfort feels like? I wish he could hold me back. All right, let's talk about Starboost. Oh, don't worry about that guy. Hey, yeah, woo. Um, Starboost needed a couple of repairs too. The helmet is in fine working order. It's an all self-contained helmet. I'm not gonna mess with that yet. The abs and the legs, that's all great. Um, I needed to fix the hands and the, the, the hands, yeah. Um, there was a problem with, is it this battery pack? Let's see, is it this one? Yeah, okay, this battery pack. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this in with one hand. And you guys get to watch me struggle. I'm not going to cut this out. All right. So the battery packs in, I needed to reposition the trigger. Um, because initially the, the button to turn it on was directly behind the repulsor and I couldn't like flex my hand the right way to turn it on. So now the switch is hiding right there behind the meat -y part of my middle finger. So now I can actually turn it on. It's not as natural as the small trigger on my Mark 85, but it works most of the time. So now I can actually turn the battery pack on and off. I don't have to have the lights on all the time um, and it, it works out pretty nicely. So that was a quick little fix. I also glued a lot of the fingers back in the place. The clear coat on this is already failing. You can see it's chipping, um, but when the light's on, like you can't see it looks it looks fine. The other thing was the booster pack here. And I talked about that in some star boost videos. I am going to be adding smoke and lights to the boosters, but I had already gone and cut the holes out for the, um, the smoke and the lights. But I, I, again, this will be done before KatsuCon, or sorry, this will be done before WonderCon, but I want lights in it for KatsuCon. So it was a very simple, quick fix. It's literally the, it's literally the exact same lights that are in the repulsors. I had a bunch of these little clicker lights here. So I gutted um, six of them and then I have one light here and I just used some really cheap little um, polystyrene plastic and I made a bracket and ran the wire and then ran all the wires over here. I put two of them here and then I used that styrene as a, uh, as a diffuser. And then you have the lights, like just like that. It, this cost me about $10 to do, not including the battery pack, I already had that. Uh, but there's about $10 of lights and wires there. Which for an effect that looks this good, that's really awesome. Like this stuff doesn't need to be expensive, guys. This is a quick, dirty fix. It gets me lights. It's gonna make some of those photo shoots beautiful. And because it's so simple, I can pull it all out and reuse those lights on something else. They're not ruined. I just you know, need to cut some wires and desolder it. And there'll be a battery pack here for the backpack. And then right here is the battery pack um, for the helmet. So if these lights die, the battery pack for the helmet's still fine. And then there's the battery pack that sits right here behind the chest on the arc reactor um, to power this. So everything is nice and self-contained. I don't have to worry about batteries draining each other or whatever the heck. So I'm very excited about that. It's gonna make some of these photos beautiful. Oh, hey, look, I got merch in. I'm wearing it. Well, I don't think you'd want this, but look at this sweatshirt. It's me. Um, this photo was taken by Benjamin Farron um, and uh, I edited it a little bit and put it on a sweatshirt. I also made it in black. That's me. I also made this one for like videos and going to cons in that's not as like, I don't know, flashy or is this one more flashy? I don't know. I thought this was cool. Um, I don't think I'm going to re be releasing these sweatshirts though because I'm not a big fan of the material. It's not cotton. It's like a neoprene nylon. I don't know what this material is. Um, some people might like it. I don't know. I, I'd much prefer cotton, but this is the only option they had if I was doing a custom. I, I can print anything anywhere on this sweatshirt, which I thought was cool. Um, 
but then I could like I could let you guys decide I could put them out there and I it says the material like they feel okay I just I wish it was cotton I wish it was like that like the shirts are amazing these are nice these are nice cotton shirts I love these um, but as for these designs I don't know yet um, let me know let me know what you guys think this isn't like a merch plug this is me trying to make merch and like seeing what you guys would be interested in I even have a phone case look Shameless plug. Hey, you, you guys want to see something weird? I've been told when I do this, I look like a completely different person. Do I look like me? Maybe it's the hair, because you guys always see my hair unless I'm in the suit. But if I'm in the suit, you know it's me. If, so it's, if it's me with the suit or me with the hair, you know. Talk to me about crypto. Let me talk to you about crypto. I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. Um, I could ramble on. I could keep going. I wanted to keep this like 10, 15 minutes. I don't know if I actually hit that goal. It's probably longer. Um, but really, please let me know what you thought about this. Like, is this a video style you would like to see more of? Because I enjoy doing these. I enjoy just letting you guys peek back behind the curtain and, and not everything needs to be a big production. From what I've gathered, I don't know how to say this without sounding conceited, I think, but like, I know a lot of you guys just like listening to me talk. I, I talk to you. I'm, I'm very active with you guys. You know that. And I know some of you just put my videos on in the background and listen to them. Um, and though a little weird maybe, but I do the same thing with like vlogs and podcasts too. So I don't know. I just, I want to bring you guys cool and exciting and fun videos while also teaching you guys how to do this stuff. So if I can, I want to find that perfect blend of it, um, between 3d printing and cosplay and just keeping things interesting and it and not get repetitive, always growing, always experimenting. Um, and I just, I can't wait to see what the future holds. So. Um, a lot more to come, uh, a new video every Saturday. I am on a schedule. That's why I was freaking out about this video, but like, let's try this one out, you know? Um, new video every Saturday. I, man, I gotta get something on the review channel. Can't wait for that. It's gonna be rough. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and you have a good day.